Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. This is Mike. I'd like to do a very quick movie log, and it will be quick because I have, have to be out of here in about two minutes. <laughs> so I just want to talk about a couple of things that I've been picking up and watching lately, starting off with this Arrow video release of the Dunwich Horror from 1970. This is a film that uh, I, I didn't even know that Arrow had this out uh, and until I saw my good friend Roger Kirby's video talking about it, so I had to rush out and get a copy. <clears throat> and couldn't because Barnes & Noble was out and they didn't even have it uh, available to order so I ordered it from Oli's.com. Very happy to have this. I saw this movie back in 1970 when it first came out. Always had very mixed feelings about it and of course I already have the uh, Midnight Movies version and this is uh, 1 hour and 28 minutes long. This is 97 minutes long. Um, I wanted to see it again in pristine condition, Blu-ray condition and see the extra features and all that sort of thing, get some more information about it. And I'm very glad that I bought this. It, it's beautiful. It's beautifully done. The imagery is just incredible. I never, I, I had forgotten just how beautiful some of the art design was. And and one of somebody on here, and I can't remember now, they, they compared the, the use of color to what Mario Bava was able to do in his films. And I, I agree completely. It made me think of Bava just looking at the design of the, the interiors and all that sort of thing, this creepy old house. So about the film, I still have mixed feelings about it. I like it very much, but I think that overall it is a, a missed opportunity, a, a misfire. They could have done many things so much better or, or at least differently. And um, one of the things that really upsets me about this movie is the theme music. Now, I don't mean all the music. Uh, the, the score was composed by Les Baxter, who did a lot of really terrific music for the American International Films. Uh, his, his score for The Pit and the Pendulum was one of the best, most innovative and creepy uh, movie scores I've ever heard. On this one, the incidental music in a lot of the scenes is very good and very tense, but the, the main theme, which plays, of course, at the beginning and, and at the, right at the end, and sort of comes into play during during the, the film in several places is so bland and so boring that it just takes any sense of horror or dread uh, or morbidity completely away from it. And I, I can't believe that they would settle on such a, a dull score. So I think that is a big, big minus for this film. Another thing is um, I think as much as I like these two lead actors, Sandra D, who, who takes a lot of beating for not being a good, good actress, but I actually like her and I think she does a good job with what she's given to do here. And Dean Stockwell is always worth watching, but I think that the two leads, the, the, the characters are written and directed uh, in a much more uninteresting way than the supporting characters. The supporting characters like Ed Begley and Lloyd Bachner, they're just acting up a storm. And then you get uh, the scenes with uh, Willard, what's his name? Willard, I guess. Uh, yeah, Willard Wanley, I think that's his name. The Dean Stockwell character and uh, the uh, character played by Sandra Dee. My memory is so bad. And they just, they're not given very much to do. I don't, I don't know. I had the impression sometimes that Dean Stockwell was almost playing this as a parody of a scary, weird character. So I think that's a big drawback for the film. I think they could have done the special effects much differently, hopefully much better. I, I, of course, if they had done it in this day and age, it would have been better, but I guess they, they only had so much time and so much money. Overall, I think that, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, a worthy part of the American international horror film canon, but I don't, I don't think that's a really terrific film. I don't think they have yet made a terrific film based on H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, Die, Monster, Die is probably the best one. The Haunted Palace uh, with Vincent Price and Deborah Paget, a very good film directed by Roger Corman. And then there, then we have, um, what is it? Oh, The Crimson Cult with Christopher Lee, Boris Karloff, and, and Barbara Steele, which is a, a big misfire and a big disappointment. So I need to get into Lovecraft. I have had this book sitting on the shelf for a long time. For $7.98, I guess if I try to tear that up, it's going to rip rip the uh, cover. Anyway, I, I still have not read any of these stories, but I think I will start. It's got pretty much all of his famous stuff, if you can see that here. And uh, so I guess that will be my next project. Another thing I picked up recently is this um, 
documentary, sort of a documentary, Dennis Hopper in the American Dream. This was made in 1971 while Dennis Hopper was making this infamous film, The Last Movie in Peru. Um, who, uh, Lawrence Schiller and Kit Carson um, made this sort of a documentary. And I say sort of because in, in the... Um, one of the special features, which is a documentary about the documentary, they say it wasn't a documentary because, uh, first of all, they weren't allowed to do that by Universal Studios because they had uh, Dennis Hopper under contract and he couldn't make another film while he was under contract to them. Also, Dennis Hopper did not want a documentary, so it became sort of a mixture of real life and a performance piece. But it's uh, 81 minutes of uh, Dennis Hopper. And, and uh, weirdness and a lot of insight, a lot of uh, performance, a lot of showing off. Uh, there's a couple of orgy scenes and a little bit of nudity, which might, I guess that's not really offensive. I don't think most of you would be offended by it. And um, just what was going on in Dennis Hopper's mind and in his life while he was making this uh, insane film. So I'm a Dennis Hopper freak and becoming more so as time goes on. I still can't believe Dennis Hopper is no longer with us. Uh, he died in 2010. And I just keep thinking he's going to show up one day, you know, and make another film or do a crazy interview. But I just, uh, I get more and more interested in seeing his work as the years go on. So I found this on the Vinegar Syndrome catalog. It wasn't made by them, but they were selling it. And uh, it's made by... Let's see, Epic, is it called Epic Pictures? Something like that. Epic Pictures. It's got their little logo on the corner here. And uh, it's a nice booklet with an essay, which is almost as much of a rambling mess as the movie. This was not actually released um, widely until the late 1990s. It was made by Schiller and Carson. Kit Carson, by the way, was the, uh, the, the husband of uh, Karen Black. And they made this uh, to release to college campuses and it, it's just very experimental very strange and certainly worth seeing but i've i had to go on ebay to find a copy of this because even though it was on the vinegar syndrome catalog they did not have any copies left so anyway that's that and i also i found this at a flea market this is a criterion louis mal the fire within from 1963 half a buck now i I watched this. I'd never heard of this. I've seen very few Louis Mal pictures. This was absolutely fantastic. Very much a new wave film. Uh, the style, sort of like what you see in uh, Breathless with all the, the jump cuts, quick quick cuts, very brief scenes. It's in black and white. Really fascinating film. And it's something I will watch again and again. Uh, it's all about a man played by, who is this actor? Who is this actor? My God. Um, Maurice Rene. I... I don't know a lot about him either, but he was fantastic. And uh, Jean Moreau was also in it. And uh, just uh, all about a man who is uh, contemplating suicide. And uh, anyway, I can't believe I got this for a half a buck. Some guy with, had this uh, about 14 stacks of movies just piled up on top of each other. Some of them were dirty. They looked like they were in bad shape. And I started digging, right, because they weren't, they weren't easily... Uh, visible like most people have them when they sell the stuff but I, I'm glad I found this half a buck folks anyway let me know what you think uh, I have to get out of here so take care